Welcome to Barbell Business. I'm Mike Bledsoe. I'm standing here with the wonderful Marcus Gersey. I prefer one and only, but I'll take the one and only. You know what? I don't know any other Marcus Gersey, so that actually works out for now. So, so, so far, so good. Until I run into the other one. Mm. Yeah. Today, we're going to be talking about the turning point. And uh, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, and some of you might be scratching your head, and that's totally okay. The reason we're talking about this is because we have noticed in ourselves and the people that we work with, there's always a point we go, aha, I get it now. I get the the business side of the house. I get that the business and the gym are not separate things. I get that it's uh, it, it all works together and it's all one single system. There is that moment that happens. And so it happened in myself, it happened in Marcus. When we work with box owners, we see it happen almost every single day. So just watching that aha moment is extremely rewarding and it allows you to like start moving forward really, really quickly. So uh, our attempt on this show today is to help you have that aha, aha moment so that you can start putting the pieces together a lot faster. Yeah, this is, um, we, in the various conversations we have, so whether we're talking about people calling in for discovery call or for Barbell Logic and they're trying to understand what it is that we're doing or how this will affect their business or most commonly when we actually are doing the system design process for someone who is onboarding right. for the system and we are literally blueprinting their entire business around their vision for themselves, the vision for their business and their type, their ideal client. And we go through this exercise, which takes, you know, we, we preface it with many conversations and surveys and all sorts of things to gather the data we need. But then in within a 60 to 90 minute conversation, we've completely turned around their perspective around the business, their self and really their opportunity. Right. Because usually yeah. it's this kind of like mystery around, well, I'm, you know, I've, I think we're doing pretty good with the training and we're doing all right. And it's like everything is kind of this like big like guess uh, in regards to like how they're doing and how they're feeling rather than feeling like they have clarity, they have a plan, they understand where they are and they have control over where they're trying to go. Yeah. And this is a lot like uh, people experience the aha moment people experience with business is the same thing that happens with training. There's everyone who starts training. I think, uh, yeah, Barbell Shrugged, we just did an episode on training versus exercise. So it is a really great analogy is a lot of box owners in the business side of the house, they're exercising. They're just doing the thing. They're moving around. They're picking random equipment to work out with. <sighs> Thrusters and pull-ups happen to be on the board, so I guess I'll do that. You know, uh, they, they don't actually understand. You know, in the beginning of CrossFit, most people don't understand the training program. They don't understand there's a method to the madness. They don't, they don't understand periodization or peaking or anything like that. It's that you walk in and, I mean, we've all been there. And you go, oh, look, you know, I'm gonna, it's constantly varied, so on and so forth. And if you're not the one putting the program together or you've never been to a certification or, you know, you don't have the education, then there's really no way, there's no way for you to understand as an athlete walking in the door that, you know, there, there's a method to this. And what ends up happening is, is over 12 to 18 months, if, if there is n no real method to your madness when you're training, we all, you hit that, you hit that wall and you go, and you start looking for, there's got to be something more. There's a smarter way to train. And sure enough, there's dozens of coaches out there now that have certification programs, seminars, that you can go to it, and then all of a sudden, these light bulbs are going off, and you go, oh, training is now making a lot of sense where it did not make sense before. The same exact thing happens with business is we go in, we're picking up random pieces of equipment, we're doing whatever somebody else wrote on the board, you know, we're looking at someone else's programming in their gym and we're just assuming it's going to work for us. So the same thing is happening in the business and usually someone has that aha moment when they hit that wall, when the things they were mm -hmm. doing stop working. Yeah, just doing a random workout or a wad off the board at whatever, you know, cherry picking, it's because that's what you're doing in business is a lot of times people are cherry picking, but when you're cherry picking your workouts, that works. It does for like 12 to 18 months and then the wheels come off. And then the same thing happens with the business. We're probably about the same amount of time, 12, 18, 24 months. People can cherry pick. They can just implement different things. It seems to be working. Things are growing. And all of a sudden, you get to 80 members. You get to 120 members. And then you, you have this membership, and you're having trouble getting it to go any further. Or you have as many members as you thought it was going to take to break even, and you're not breaking even. Or you're not taking home the paycheck you thought you were going to be able to take home. And so... These are, again, these are the moments. These are the, the pivotal moments where you hit what you thought you hit in like your membership number and then you realize 
this is not sustainable. And then that's usually when people start seeking. And if they find a coach, a business coach or something like that, then it's that can that's a huge shift. And that's what we want to talk about. Yeah. I mean, you the parallel you drew with training is perfect because you train for, you know, 12, 18 months and the randomness is better than what you were doing before. So maybe you had a job working for someone else before and you're like, I'm, you know, I'm in control of my own destiny now. I've built my own business. I've gotten the ball rolling. Like, I feel good about the impact that I'm making, but I, I don't necessarily have the clarity. I'm not really sure what it is about it that's working and not necessarily working. It's all best guesses. And in your training, you get to the point to where you're like, I'm either starting to get hurt or I'm starting to get tired or I'm not getting the results I actually want. I've, I'm better than I was before, but I'm now actually in a position where I'm, I know that I want something else. I want the next level, right? Yeah, and there's that, that, there's that period of time when you do hit that wall, when you, hit, when you plateau in your training or in the business where it's a little confusing. Like fuck, man! I thought I knew what I was doing. I it, it worked it, to get the ball rolling. It, it doesn't. What is happening? It's confusing. And people, when you look at people that have the business thing figured out and the gym is running really well, it might seem like a mystery. Um, I remember looking at uh, at other businesses at one point and going, it just felt like a mystery. It's like, where do I even start? You know, that's that's if you're in that position where you're like, I don't even know where to start. The fact that you're listening to this show means you're in a really good spot because by the end, we're going to tell you exactly how to start. <laughs> hey, don't don't let the cat out of the bag. But, I mean, yet. we're going to wait till the very end. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and really what it comes down to today, and, I mean, out of the box owners, we keep data on every part of it, right? So how long right. have they been in business? What size are they? What market are they in, et cetera? And by the way, I don't know anyone who's collecting this data. I think we might be doing the best job of collecting data at this point trying to yeah trying to make an educated decision right yeah i don't want to best guess my way through it either <laughs> go ahead um but um you know there's the trend is is when when we get someone who's about 24 months in so that two year mark plus is usually when they start realizing there's more to this i've been i've kind of been freestyling my way through this i've i've maxed out and exhausted all of my best guesses and credit cards and, and it might, <laughs> probably your credit cards and I want to now actually get a paycheck. I actually want to now pay my staff properly. I want to reinvest in my business. I want to do whatever you want to do. You, This is your destiny. You started your business. You should be in control of your own destiny. And you realize at the 24 month mark, usually that, oh shit, I'm not really in control because I have no idea how this is really working. I know that we do a good job coaching. We care a lot. We're, you know, we, we try to keep the place clean. It's like the, the basics are there, but there's no strategy to it. And with where the market is today in the CrossFit affiliate scene, um, we've talked about this before. The market is consolidating. And this is a this is a great thing for those who want to be in business for the long haul. You want to build a sustainable business. This is your opportunity to now stand out from those who are not willing to like take their business seriously, zoom out and say, okay, well, what are we really doing? Who are we trying to impact? How can we do the best job possible? Not just coaching, but running an awesome business so that you can have happy employees and happy customers, which is going to mean you're going to be a happy business owner. Right, so it's kind of time to shit or get off the pot because the time is now to either stand out and win or to kind of go by the wayside and burn yourself out because it's only getting harder to compete and be successful because you can't get away with as much nowadays. There's yeah. more competition. There's a um, a more educated marketplace, so you can't just kind of wing your way through it and be like, oh, we just all kind of do a shitty job on our on our intake process. But the training is going to be really good. Trust us. Right. People are there's other people now doing a really good job with how they're presenting themselves on their website to their intake process and, and managing perceived value. So they're coming into something feeling like this is really special and you're just going to wing it and kind of go through the whole thing on your best guess. It's not going to add up to what you want it to add up to. Yeah, and one of the things I want to point out is a lot of times when we think about competition, we're thinking about the other CrossFit box down the road. Mm -hmm. There are other people coming. And one of the, not CrossFit boxes, there's going to be other types of gyms that are functional fitness that are going to be catching on. Um, we're having conversations with people that are, that are working on that. Additionally, um, the biggest sign that that is actually happening is the fact that CrossFit.com decided to update their website and their marketing strategy. Uh, you know, uh, it, CrossFit HQ has been famous for saying we don't have a marketing strategy. That is something that used to be true. The fact that they built a new website and I, I checked it out, it looks like they have a marketing strategy now. <laughs> so the fact that they're doing it, times are a changing. So it's not just it, 
they're responding <clears throat> to things that are happening in the marketplace overall. They're not responding to what's happening with CrossFit gyms. They're responding to other functional fitness programs that are attempting to do something similar. So you don't just have to worry about CrossFit gyms, you know, the guy opening up a box down the street more. There's other things happening. So the market's going to become com- competitive in a lot of ways. And you don't just have to be better than the next guy anymore. The next guy might not even be on your radar. And the fact that CrossFit has updated their website tells me a lot about what's happening in the fitness industry as a whole. Yeah, the evolution is happening as we speak. And yeah. it's it's your opportunity to now build a long-standing, sustainable business that stands out not just amongst other CrossFit boxes, but just in your local fitness market. It's, it is it is about building something bigger than just, just thinking, i got to be the best CrossFit boxes. I've got to build the best gym in the area. We use CrossFit as our methodology, but I've got to be able to compete with everybody. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's take a break real quick. When we come back, we're going to talk about the the specific things you can do to take control of your destiny. My name is Meg Herman. I am the co-owner of Reebok CrossFit Coastal Carolina on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. When I met the Barbell Logic team, I really feel like I gained a team of consultants, people that were ready to help us and create those ideas. And then we implemented the tool. I was the quintessential harried entrepreneur doing just about everything you can think about in the gym to keep it going, to keep it growing. So I thought um, it was a real struggle, constantly coaching, accounting, cleaning, doing all those things. And what I was recognizing at that point was we weren't growing and I was working really hard in the business but not on the business. We spent a ton of time talking about best practices, talking about the systems that you need to run a gym effectively and to grow and to focus on growth. The new client experience, the new athlete experience is crucial. It's crucial in gaining new members. And I feel like we've got a really good system that's in place for when a new athlete comes into our gym. I only have to touch it here and there and make a quick phone call, reach out, find out how people are doing. This has made all the difference. So here I am, eight months after implementing the Barbell Logic program. I'm a new person. I feel like my life is back in balance again. I feel confident in our growth, and I I have that work-life balance that we all strive for. And I'm I'm more confident in my team and our ability to, to really grow in this marketplace. Welcome back. Uh, today we're talking, what are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about the turning point. Oh, yeah. That moment where you go, ah, this is how it works. Now I know exactly where to start. And everything changes. Everything changes. Look, if it's still not clicking for you, that is okay. Just keep listening. Keep just doing the stuff we say. It will happen. Um, everybody is capable, I promise. It's, it's, it, it, I think anyone can have that breakthrough where it's no longer a mystery. There's there's a pattern I observed over the years being around various different successful entrepreneurs because of my parents and the people they associated yeah. with and the people that I sought out in my own journey that there is a turning point. Everyone will tell you there was a moment where I went from just just working and grinding and trying to figure it out to where all of a sudden I got it. And it made sense and I got clarity and I was like, oh, if I just focus on this piece yeah. and – and this perspective on my business, everything makes sense. And now it's no longer a guessing game at all. Now it's really a matter of, okay, now I just need to make sure I'm, I'm working on these key aspects and I keep this certain attitude or whatever that, that shift was. But there is that moment every time. And that's the difference when you go from like kind of rookie to pro is when, yeah. you, when you make that, that graduation mentally or emotionally to understanding there is a method. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I just need to understand the method that is going to work for what I'm trying to accomplish and then go for it. And then it's just continue to learn and grow and evolve and that's it. Yeah, the, the reinventing of the wheel. That, that's the thing that I got stuck in for a long time. Mm-hmm. I thought that everything that I did had to be unique and original. And I also thought that uh, the business practices that were working for personal training studios and stuff like that didn't apply to me mm-hmm. because I was CrossFit. And so... Uh, Kind of, uh, like you're saying, not reinventing the wheel and, and going, okay, I can go and learn from these different business practices. The business 
principles and practices that are being used in a restaurant a lot of times are the same exact ones you should be using in your gym. What you're doing is not that special. It's not um, – what is special? I don't want – you are a snowflake. No, but uh, – <laughs> but what's – what? Really, you're not the first one doing the thing you're doing. You're not the first one to struggle with the thing you're struggling with. And um, if you can get a little bit of elevation, a little bit, you know, get out of out of the business a little bit and look at it a little more objectively, there's some things that you're going to go, oh, this is exactly what I should do. But reinventing the wheel is a thing that I was constantly trying to do. And then once I realized, I started learning, like most of the, the business stuff I learned from the beginning was I was watching somebody who was teaching people how to do online businesses. And I was taking all that stuff and I was applying it to the gym business. And that's when the gym started really taking off. And it was like, it was, he was teaching something that had nothing to do with a brick and mortar business or eat fitness or anything like that. But the principles, we started applying those principles. And that's one reason I think we're, we're really good at what we do now is because we were able to find the principles early on. You know, the methods are many, and a lot of times people get stuck in using this method or that method. And we talked a little bit about that in the beginning where it's just kind of random. You're like, today I'm doing Jim Windler's 531, and then I'll be doing, you know, the small off squat routine or whatever. And so that's kind of what... Um, we were, you know, a lot of people in businesses do, they're like taking this from this business coach or this from this podcast. And they're like kind of just piecing it together. And one of the things that we were just lucky enough to do was we were actually studying just the principles and then seeing how it fit in our business. So I, I think that really gave us a leg up. And in turn, um, because that is actually how we were taught, that is how we teach. So a lot of people teach a specific method. They go, look, just do it my way. And, and a lot of people are like, do it my way or the highway. If you don't stick exactly to my plan, it's not going to work. And, you know, and for us, it's like, you know, I'm glad that stuff is out there. I'm glad people do teach that. It's, it's really good. Most people need to get started with a method. It's a great place to start. Yeah, but after a while, you have to learn the principles. And for us, we really try to focus on the principles right out the gate, you know, and because once people understand that, then they have that a, a level of autonomy and empowerment, and they go, they know exactly what needs to happen beyond like, I just need to do this next step because this guy told me to do it. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a sense of freedom when you understand yeah. fundamentals because now you can be creative around what what it is that you actually see. I mean, most small business owners, when you ask them, you know, what is your vision? They've got a pretty damn clear idea of oh, what yeah. they're picturing this business looking like and feeling like, and this is how the clients are responding, and this is what's happening in our, in our local market. They can tell you what it is, but then when you look at the business model itself, it is not in alignment with that at all. Oh, yeah. And it's because the business model was just cobbled together on best guesses or more often than not in our industry, just copying what other people are doing, saying, well, he's pretty successful and he does this, so I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Rather than taking like the principle of what that person is doing, adapting it through your lens and mm -hmm. putting that into your business, and now you have something that's built on sound fundamentals and principles that apply across the board in the service business model, right? So you can look at an attorney. How is this attorney who's crushing it doing business? Watch their entire process and see, oh, that's the same pattern I could be using in my yep. business, yep. right? Or this this hair salon that crushes it locally. And it's like, why is that hair salon like destroying all the other hair salons in the area and has the best reputation? They do the best haircuts, they do the whatever. Go through their process, call them up, say, I want an appointment and go through it and see what happens and see what's different and see what you can learn. And that's what you're speaking to is, is pulling those concepts and those principles into our business and understanding, oh shit, there's a method to this and I can make it my own. I'm not just like copying or doing some sort of like sell out like business model. It's like, no, successful service businesses have these key points and these key yeah. aspects on making sure that your intake process for new clients matches the kind of service that you have. Yeah. It's not just based on convenience or it's based on what other people are doing. Most people are doing it wrong. Yeah. Right? In our industry specifically, <laughs> it's the blind leading yeah. the blind yeah. most of the time. And it's just because the guy down the street's doing it and you're like, well, he looks like he's pretty successful. So I'm just going to start doing that too. Yeah. And what? rather than it being around, these, these are my principles that I understand and know to be true. And now I just have to take and figure out exactly how I can choose my own adventure. And you have control. You have yeah. total control of your destiny. And that's the clarity point that we get on like the, usually the, the system design calls that we do. They realize, oh shit. All the things you told me, I've already been feeling and thinking about for years. I just didn't understand how they all kind of lined yeah. up, and I can actually do all that. Yeah, me personally, um, uh, I know Doug and I uh, have talked about this a lot, and we've practiced this, which is 
uh, I go out of my way to enjoy premium uh, services. So uh, that my and, and Marcus has a background in this. So um, once I realized that I wanted to offer a premium service, like I wanted to be the best in town, uh, one of the ways that I learned to do that is I started going to other premium businesses. Mm-hmm. What I what I stopped doing is price shopping. What <laughs> what I started doing is oh. I want to fly. I'm not going to fly this way every time, but I'm going to book a flight on Virgin Airlines because I know that flying Virgin is a premium thing and it costs a couple hundred bucks more to fly with them. However, from the moment you're you're on the website to buying the ticket to when you show up, the entire experience is completely different mm-hmm. than if you're flying American Airlines. It's a different service. <clears throat> so I encourage you. I don't, I'm not saying you have to live your life in, with these with premium services in every aspect of your life. Why not? But, <laughs> but but try it out you know like yeah. go fly virgin one time you know spend a couple hundred bucks stay at the nicest resort in town um and one of the things that got me doing that is i started attending masterminds um and uh our friend evan pagan i he, he has the best masterminds that i've attended and one of the things that he makes sure to do is he books all of his stuff at premium hotels and that's one of the things we learned was he um so I got a taste. I, I go to Miami to a mastermind there, and I'm like, "This is the nicest hotel I've ever stepped in." And I'm a gym owner, you know, I, or I, you know, I just have a podcast about fitness, and I never thought to spend like extra coin on that premium experience. But he kind of forced me to in a way. He's like, "No, you're gonna be at this thing. It's best to stay at the hotel." And you're like, "Okay." And then the next mastermind, three months later, I'm in Santa Barbara at the Bacara Resort. You know, it's famous for being the nicest resort in like. Southern California, Santa Barbara, and it's like, holy shit, you step in there and you go, all right, this is what a premium, and like, I, I drive up and everything's just taken care of for me. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is crazy. Again, I don't live my life like this every single day. It would be cool. But having those super high premium experiences will shed light on how you can do the same thing in your own business. And so it's good to do it one or two times. And I know with our mastermind now, what we do is we do the we do the premium resorts for that reason. You know, we did uh, in Cabo. We was all inclusive at the Hyatt, and that was. I think that stay was probably one of the nicest hotels I've ever stayed at. It was awesome. Yeah, that was killer. And then we're gonna be staying at the W in Hollywood for the next one. And, and we chose the W because we know that when our mastermind members show up, it's probably gonna be the nicest thing they've ever done. And it's and <clears throat> when they leave that, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna take naturally it doesn't even have to be if it's conscious it's even better but even on a subconscious level you're going to go back and start raising the bar you're going to bring that same vibration that you experienced here and you're going to take it back so i would really encourage you to do that and i was this is something i learned late in life because i grew up in a family like we were construction like you don't and, and when you go on vacation, like everything's about saving money. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's we're supposed to be blue collar. We're supposed to be this. So I never did learn at a young age exactly what premium was. It was just something that other people did to waste money. And that was the impression I was left with. Now that I've gotten older, I'm glad that I've changed some of my beliefs around that because having being forced into some of those premium service experiences has shown me like how beautiful and enjoyable and and what a difference it does make in in my you know my lifestyle. Now Marcus, you grew up um well early in your career you worked for a business that was premium. Um and I never I didn't have that experience where I was in a premium service business before. So I had to like basically come from scratch, but you worked at the Ritz Carlton. I did. So you had like this you already like, was it that hotel pretty much hammers home customer experience all the way through? Can you share with us, like, how that impacted you now? That was probably my biggest aha moment was in my time with the Ritz Carlton because they have, you know, being behind the curtain, like, I had been exposed to, you know, nice things and, and beautiful places, not because we necessarily had so much money growing up, but because my parents always believed in. They, they were service providers themselves, right? So my mom owned a salon in Newport Beach and she was an esthetician, but she had a crazy reputation like for being the best. She had a small little spot. It was super boutique. Nice. She was way more expensive than everybody else, but she was better than everybody else. And she was really good at facilitating that experience. Um, my father dealt with um, international car dealing and, and local as well. And we had a car wash and we, we did all sorts of things. I, I've, I've worked in, I mean, dozens and dozens of businesses, small businesses, even leading up to that. 
And when I got to the Ritz Carlton, I first of all, just showing up at a Ritz is already impressive, right? They they freaking nail it. Yeah. But then when you understand the methodology behind like what is actually happening and that this is all architected, this is every single thing from the language, the words, it's not how you accident. respond, how you stand, the yeah. distance that you keep. I mean, you name it. It is an art form top to bottom. And I just started to... I, 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 I had a turning point where I understood that I am in control of everyone's experience in my life around mm -hmm. me, right? Mm -hmm. So I can, I can, I choose how I show up. And then going into my service business with the gym, I understood I can control all of these different elements from how the gym is laid out to how it looks, you know, so looks and feels. So when you take that first step in, what is the first thing that you naturally do? Where do you look? What are you, what are you experiencing? Do typically people scan from left to right or right to left? And understanding where I want to position certain things, the distances, how many steps is it from here to there? I, I know this is like over the top for many, but that's what's going through my head. One thing I've noticed I want to praise you for is even when we're not in a work scenario i see you being of service and anticipating uh needs like better than me and and i'm like always learning when i'm hanging out with marcus i'm always learning i'm learning how to anticipate people's uh needs and desires before they even ask for them and it's something uh we were at the crossfit games this past weekend and i noticed how you did that numerous times you would notice as somebody was thirsty before they were thirsty he's like oh let me get you a drink or they're carrying a, a woman's carrying a heavy bag and, and then you're like, oh, let me carry that for you. And I'm going, shit. <laughs> like, like, you're making me look bad. But, it, it, but at the same time. Mission accomplished. But the thing is, is I, the whole time I'm, I, I'm, I'm watching and I'm learning and I'm slowly making progress your direction. I'm going, Marcus is really good at this. When that's his way of showing love and that's how a lot of people receive love. So it's really cool to have, hang out with you and have that demonstration right in front of me on a you know weekly basis where I'm like, okay. So now I am I'm making that I was like, all right, when that scenario happens again, I'm gonna step in. You know, because Marcus not, might not be here and that should happen. Oh well, first of all, thank you very much. But that that's where I think I got really lucky is that that was something that always a was a desire for me. And go at the Ritz Carlton, that is literally the foundation of their service is anticipate needs try to stay ahead of where yeah. someone could possibly want to go. What would be the next best thing to have happen? Mm -hmm. And the moral of the story here is that you can carry these things from any of these businesses into your own business. And being around higher level services is going to help you as a CrossFit gym owner. We are the higher level service. We are the premium fitness service in our local market. Yeah. So by creating processes and and the way that you're interacting from like when someone fills out the form on your site what happens next are you just sending them a link to schedule themselves like that's a really low quality experience and you're expecting them to pay top dollar for something that is you know after the fact right so there's all these misalignments where you can go through these processes and these experiences and see what people are doing and say man that part really felt good stop zoom out look at it and be like oh that's because they got back to me right away or they did this or they did that and um, it's yeah. a cool thing. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of times when I look at even just if I'm if I'm communicating with a box owner and I go to the website, it's like what you're talking about is the ability. I, I start looking like, all right, if I'm a potential customer and I'm going to show up to their gym, and then I have to go through five pages and I have to click around forever just to figure out how, when to show up, how to pay, how to like. It, it's just it's a debacle before I even show up. I'm like, all right. My first impression is not great. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the level of service being, the level of service should come before any check is written, you know, any money is exchanged. You have to like provide that value as fast and as soon as, at the highest uh, uh, of your ability as early in the relationship as possible. Mm -hmm. And that relationship begins when they land on your website. It, yeah, people think it starts when they show up at the gym and they have all these reasons for justifying saying, well, it's self-selecting by making my process a little bit harder and making them have to go through, jump through these hoops to get here. I understand where you're coming from, but you're barking up the wrong tree. We are in a business to where we have to meet people where they are because what we do is quite different. So you have to meet them where they're at and say, come on, where are you at? Oh, you're over here. Come on, let me talk to you from where you're at today. And I'm going to walk you through the process until you have enough information to make the right decision. But if there's no trust built, if there's no, if it's not about them, it's not personalized, we kind of miss the boat. Yeah. Um, so that said, what can the gym owners do today to start actually getting clarity and have that aha moment? Yeah, because we've had the aha moment 
and we witness it so much, we've created a process that we think will incite that that uh, that thing, that aha, the thing. So we don't know if it's going to happen on day one. We don't know how, if it's going to happen on day five. But somewhere between day one and day five, it's going to happen. Yeah. And um, we're calling it the life cycle challenge. So yep. you go to was it what, what's the uh, link? So barbellbusiness.com slash life cycle. Life cycle. Mm-hmm. Just go there, and then that's your st- first step. It's free. You just mm-hmm. go there, and it's going to be a five day course. And by the end of that course, you're going to. The idea is it's going to illuminate some things in your business, and we're, what we're trying to do is incite that aha, so then you go, oh, I know exactly what to do next, and you can just start doing it, and then great things start happening, yeah. like magic. That's, that's, that's all it is. It's just yeah. magic. Um, <laughs> so that's the DIY, right? So right. you can go and you can do this, and really, I think regardless of where you're at in your business owner journey as a box owner, whether you're thinking about opening a box or you've been in business for eight years, go and do this challenge because it's going to help you get that clarity because it makes you go through the steps of actually laying out cl- your client experience. And when you go through this, you realize, oh shit, I actually have control over this whole thing. Yeah. And I can build it the way that I've always wanted to build it when I understand step one, step two, step three, all the way through. Um, the other way to do this is to hire a coach, right? So just like how you with your training, you're doing your own thing in your global gym for who knows how long. And then eventually you're like, you know what? I'm going to get a coach. You pay for a premium service or you hire a, a remote coach or whatever it is. And you realize you said, I think you said this last week during an interview we did with FitAid where they said, um, uh, what is like, what is the aha? And you're like, every time someone hires a coach, they go, damn it. Why didn't I do that sooner? Yeah. And you can find coaches all over. Just make sure that the person that you're hiring to help you as a coach has al- actually already accomplished what you want to accomplish right. so that they can yeah. actually give you, <laughs> okay, I've been there. I understand what you're going through and can actually guide you rather than someone who just is maybe a, a smooth talker or someone who is, you know, a great communicator um, just telling you what to do. Yeah, I was talking to a, a couple on the phone uh, about two weeks ago, and uh, we were talk uh, box owners, and, uh, you know, uh, A, I got them to raise the price of membership to a couple hundred bucks from wherever they were at, and then we get later in the discussion, we're talking about investing money in coaching. And, you know, they want to invest money in coaching, and they don't. they didn't have a lot of money to invest in that, and but at the same time they're like we know we should be investing in this you know what should we do and they were wanting to do a $200 a month program online and uh it was a couple and the woman said but it's so expensive I'm like so you're gonna ask clients to pay you 200 bucks a month but you're not gonna spend 200 bucks on coaching yourself you're so out of alignment Mm -hmm. if you can't do that you will be out of business like you just like if you can't <laughs> the same amount, mm-hmm. um, it's, more than likely you need to be paying uh, your coach is gonna you're gonna be paying them five to ten times more than what you're asking people to pay you. That's just the way it is. A business coach is a different level of coaching. It's a different level of person, and they have a, a deeper understanding of things than the average fitness coach. Um, just from like a understanding how human consciousness works period most business coaches have to get in very very deep or the average fitness coach is not going to be able to go and that is why it's more expensive and totally worth it well and i mean it's it's as simple as this i've had so many gym owners ask you know how can i sell more personal training well have you ever had a personal trainer no go hire a personal trainer you go pay for it and experience yeah. how freaking awesome it is and realize the difference where you can you have all your own aha and why moments so that you can then have the conversation back dude it's so awesome trust me because you're coming from a a place where you believe in it rather than where you're like i'm selling something pretty expensive i hope you buy it that's not a really good place to come from and understanding when it comes to your business like having someone help you get that clarity and and get everything like on track from from the outside in so it's not just you in the mix and you're making all these justifications and all these things and someone coming in from the outside and, and helping guide you and at very least just understand, well, that doesn't look like that makes sense. And what's with this over here? You said you were trying to accomplish this. This doesn't make any sense. And it's usually that outside perspective oh, in yeah. that's going to give you so much clarity. And you can do this with like, there's local groups. There's all sorts of different levels you can find um, for getting a coach or guidance or mentor. Or- what's funny is my coach, uh, it, I saw him, he posted this on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. He was like, if I could just take my own advice. <laughs> and 
and my coach is one of the smartest people um, I've ever met. And we've had him on the show before, Brian Franklin. Um, he came on. He wrote the book, Last Safe Investment. Uh, awesome check book. it out. Yeah. One of the best business books I've ever read. He's my coach. He costs a decent amount of money. He's one of those Silicon Valley guys now. He, um, but he, even he struggles with taking his own advice. Even though he's so, he's been in the game for so long, mm-hmm. but he still needs that outside perspective in order to make progress. So even if you're not hiring, like it's good to have someone who's been where you want to be, but uh, you st- just having a third party, just having somebody on the outside yeah. looking in, they're going to be able to see <clears throat> shit. You can't see it when you're in it. It's just yeah. how it is. Yeah. And um, okay, so we've got DIY, we've got get a coach, and then lastly, just have it done for you. Like yeah. fi- hire someone to just get this thing built for you. And to take you through the exercises and understanding what does your business need to look like? What is your goal for yourself within the business? Who is your ideal client? Um, and then actually help you assemble the business accordingly. Um, we do um, with our discovery sessions for CrossFit affiliate owners, we go through an exercise of, of asking them, well, where are you now? Where are you trying to go? What's the gap? Right? So understanding, first of all, that there is a gap and that something is out of alignment. And if you're interested in figuring out what that is, just schedule a discovery call. I'm happy to walk through with you. We spend a good amount of time on the call to really understand who you are and what your vision is and and what you're doing right and what maybe you're not doing right and where our opportunities are for improvement. Um, This is all around the Barbell Logic um, system, by the way, which is a, a, a business optimization platform that's part you know, site and automation, but it's also business coaching. It's, you can't just go out and buy a website or go buy an automation series of campaigns and just hope that that like that um, one size fits all approach or that like, it's just a good looking site is going to help. You're looking at things in a fragmented fashion where our approach is about, let's understand you, your business, your vision, where you are, where you're trying to go, your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, your threats. And based on all that information and your ideal client, we're now going to help you get the business in alignment so that it's actually set up to grow to where you want it to go. Not just what someone else might define as a successful box, but what you define as a successful box and how you can service your members best and then you actually have then the system and the machine, so the, the site and the lead magnets and the lead nurturing campaigns and the sales process and what are you doing for your onboarding and how is your membership structure? Does all that make sense? Does your referral program complement what your evergreen intake offer is, et cetera, et cetera, and getting all these pieces into alignment so that you can actually grow your business to where it needs to be to be sustainable so you can have the kind of lifestyle you want to have um, and so forth. So. It all starts with a discovery session. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Make sure <laughs> I can't talk. Uh, Make sure to go to barbellbusiness.com slash lifecycle. If you want to start implementing any of the stuff we talked about today, that's step one. Knock it out, and I'll see you next time.